Uh, no, good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> it's my pleasure to stand here and uh, to be invited and uh, have this very wonderful conference together with all of you. And uh, first, I would like to um, give my thanks to our SQ committee and uh, your very wonderful organization and uh, all of our groups. And we really enjoy it. And we like the uh, clean air here and uh, the wonderful beach and also our room is comfortable, the interesting field trip and the very wonderful presentations. And glad to see you and glad to know you. We, we hope to have a, a further contact. Yes. <laughs> and uh, this is really, really kind of a vacation for all of us. Because you know in China and especially in Shanghai, life is really fast and busy. Every day you are struggling. <laughs> okay, so uh, for my presentation, uh, this is related to sustainable development and also your word integration. And uh, before I turn to my uh, introduction, I think mm -hmm. this is a very, very important year for Bulgaria and China because mm, we have 17 years mm, relationship. So uh, the diplomatic relation between China and Bulgaria were established in October 4th. That is three days after our new uh, political uh, um, system. Yes. So, so uh, that is the second country uh, have a relation. The first one is Russia. <laughs> in the past 70 years, the two countries maintained exchange at all levels. And in 1985, we have the mixed the committee of um, economy, trade, and science and technology. Then uh, every, uh, after that, we have um, eight regular meetings. And, and then in this year, uh, our Chinese president, Xi Jinping, on um, July 3rd, uh, had talks with the Bulgarian president, Roman Randolph, in the Great Hall of the people in Beijing. And uh, they decided to leave the state-to-state -state ties to a strategic partnership. So we are closer. And this is the, the two couples in a very good relation. And, um, and uh, we say the sign of our relation, this is a kind of very good example of um, the word uh, integration. At present we say the, the, the country is not the old country and the city has to have a lot of um, a close relation with other cities yeah. and a village has been a new village. We have to pay attention to the economic development and also we pay a lot of attention to the ecological things. So how could we keep all these kind of good things to our future generation? So world is integrated. We have to have the new view to, to build a new city or new country. That is sustainable development. And um, so this is um, the development strategy and policy advocated by the United Nations and recognized by all countries in the world, including China. And there are three important milestones. The first one is the Stockholm Conference in 1972. And then we have the Royal Conference in 1992. And then the Rio Plus 20 conference in, in 2012. So at present, the United Nations is advancing the SDGs for 2015 to 2030. A lot of students have gave a presentation related to the SDG goals. And uh, it can be predicted that the United Nations will hold another World Summit on Sustainable Development in 2032. 20 years after Rio Plus 20 conference. In terms of my research, the following three aspects of China experience can be internationally accepted. Um, when, when I try to get this, this topic, I think, you know, what should I introduce? Because this area, the Black Sea area, is really far from my country, and the situation is quite different, and economic development is quite different. So, so, so what I'm thinking is we try to give China's experience and some of our doings, and maybe you can you can have some suggestion, because 
although China got these kind of ideas not very early, maybe uh, because uh, from uh, 1992, but actually China is a very large country. We have a lot of uh, uh, practical experiments. So these kind of things could, uh, could uh, these kind of data or these kind of experiments could give some suggestions. So for sustainable development, according to the world view, the economy, society, environment, and governance are the uh, four pillars. Well, in, in China study, we say when we try to borrow these kind of ideas in China, we cannot solve all problems. So we think cultural construction is another thing very important. And uh, this is influenced much of China's practice, which is not emphasized internationally. So cultural construction should be incorporated into the world sustainable development system as the fifth element and emphasized as the glue of all the other development elements, just like this one shows. So we have all these kind of things, but they are more um, separated or they are more individually. So how could we make all these kind of things together and make the things more synthesized? We need culture. So when you put these kind of theories in different culture, you need to try to use the local ideas to solve new problems. Okay, and um, in China, we say uh, based on this five in one construction, um, especially focusing on chi uh, cultural construction, China has established an analytical model and a hypothesis work on three dimensions of object-subject process. And um, uh, here, by the way, we say Chinese culture is quite different from other culture. We are more obedient. We, we try to follow the rules. And uh, we think law is very important. And uh, these kind of things are quite different from the uh, European countries or from the United States or some, some other countries. So only when you think about culture things, you accept, respect these kind of things, you can have sustainable development solutions individually. And um, so the first one is what do we say, the ideas. How could we um, try to develop the uh, sustainable development? We say, um, economy is important, government is important, the political system is important, and the, the ecological building is important, but also we have to think about culture. And second thing is, uh, how could we get this kind of capital to support? Without money, you can do nothing, okay? So second one is um, about China's PPP model. So this model actually is coming from Europe. So uh, it is refers to public-private partnership, which means the government and social capital try to make some cooperation. And this PPP model is an important part of China's modernization of national governance capacity and governance structure in the field of infrastructure and public service, which can provide funds and lead efficiency in the provision of public goods and services. So actually the PPP model, it comes in, uh, from two countries. The first one is uh, France, uh, it is the franchise model. And the second one is the United Kingdom model. They have some difference. That is uh, which one is the subject. So who takes the control? And in China we say the character uh, is, because, because in China we say the government has uh, um, always has a lot of uh, power and authority to do a lot of things. So we have the Chinese character. Uh, okay, and uh, this is about the um, uh, importance of the PPP. And in sustainable development uh, research in China would say, PPP without this kind of idea, this is just like blind. So you cannot see where is your way. You don't know whether you are right you cannot have a very clear direction. So that is like blind. And uh, the sustainable development without PPP, without these kind of capital uh, support, it is like lamb. So it will be difficult to walk on. Okay. So for the perspective of sustainable development, we conclude 
evolution process of China domestic PPP model into uh, three stages. And then in, in China, we say uh, different places have kind of uh, uh, un uh, in equalization, maybe. So uh, Shanghai is here. So it's nearly here. The first phase, that is uh, the government needs the private funds to implement the budget. So I, I don't have enough money. You can try to support me. And uh, after that, after kind of practice, we could have a better use for the capital. That is the two point phase. We call it um, the cooperation of government and the private funds could have uh, improving the efficiency of the sustainable development uh, construction. And uh, then next one is try to totally realize sustainable economy. So this is part, economy is related to uh, three E's as we have uh, uh, we have known from a lot of uh, uh, UN uh, information that is um, you try to make your economy good and keep the equity and also pay attention to the ecology. Okay, and uh, the aim for China sustainable development is try to build a world city. Um, that is also the aim of Shanghai in 2035. Later I will try to show you different um, goals. And uh, because at present we are preparing for China's 19th National Congress, this is one aim of China's this very important, the whole nation's National Congress. And also this is uh, 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 coherent with the UN 2030 goals. Um, so this is what we have introduced for the, for the three phases. And we say uh, this 3.0 phase is consistent with the emphasis of China's 19th National Congress on people-centered development. Um, although we have a really large population, but um, we try to help every person uh, feel better. Um, to update the new three key ideas of the new era with United Nations 2030s emphasized as the most important means to promote sustainable development. And furthermore, form Chinese system which contributes international sustainable development study. And then, next one is the example of Shanghai. So we have these kind of ideas. We try to solve the problem of capital. Of course, we have some other things, but I think the support is the, uh, what I want to emphasize, okay. And uh, the third one is uh, the example of Shanghai. So Shanghai, I think, is the most developed city in China. So in our uh, students' presentation, you have heard we have a, a very, very popular sharing economy. We have a lot of bicycles and automobiles on the street. You can just drive away. And uh, we have the green finance. When you want to pay uh, to buy something, for us in China, it's no need to bring your purse. It's no need to bring your credit card. It's no need to bring your cash. Cell phone. No, this is not cell phone. Cell phone is enough. You can do everything. Even your key, you can leave it at home. So this, uh, and next one is uh, the new energy vehicles. Our students have has mentioned, and just now she has mentioned that the, the license plate in, China, in Shanghai, the license plate, if you want to drive the car, the license plate for the car is um, 11,000 euro for one piece. Without it, you cannot drive. But it, is, is that for a period of time? or No, all the time. So everyone, if you want to drive a car, you have to pay 11 euro to buy this plate, otherwise you cannot drive. But suppose you buy the new energy vehicle, we give it for free. So this is kind of a uh, promote. These, uh, these we, we have a lot of uh, very useful um, measures. And also some students uh, has mentioned the trash, trash classification, it is very, very strict. In a, um, it, uh, a lot of um, uh, in a lot of primary schools, the the children they are told 
you have to teach your parents the trash classification. So the parents always listen to the children and these kind of things could be promoted better. So this is very, very good. And also we have the public transportation for the vulnerable groups. In China, we don't have very large bus in prior states. But uh, from this year, uh, in Shanghai, we have changed a lot of uh, big uh, public bus. Then for the vulnerable people, they can go on the bus. So they have better life. Um, so for Shanghai's 2035 goal, we try to build an excellent global city, which is uh, uh, innovative, humanistic, and also ecological. So this is uh, related to the three E problems, and also the three P problem we have heard. That is, we pay attention to people, we want to keep our profit, and at the same time, we protect our planet. For innovative city, um, the traditional global cities are purely financial centers, like um, Tokyo, uh, Paris, um, London. But China, uh, Shanghai, we want to be not only the financial centers, we want to have our flying tech. So technology and the finance could be combined together. And uh, for the humanistic city, we will want to change the non equalization of basic public service between the urban center and the periphery. I don't know what is the situation in your country, but in China, different place, we have really, really um, very large uh, distinct. Some places have very good economy, but some places are very poor. Okay. And how to balance the development of main urban area and the suburban city. <laughs> so, so in, in Shanghai, we have some, some uh, uh, description like um, uh, all these kind of Shanghai nurses that live in the very, very suburban parts. And who is living in the center? Foreigners. <laughs> International friends. Because in, in the inner part, uh, the transportation is very good and it's easy to go to the centers. But uh, for these kind of um, comparatively poor persons, the local people, they may live far away. So this is um, uh, the situation, but we want to change it. We want to have a, a better balance. And um, um, the third one is how to embody the inclusiveness of vulnerable groups, so just now I have mentioned. And the third one is um, an ecological city. Shanghai has to realize the following targets. One is changed from a city of land expansion to zero or even negative land growth. So in the previous years, China, in China, a lot of cities development relies on the land selling, the land selling. So the government tried to sell land to these um, private persons or, but, but they don't have uh, the ownership. They can only use it. In China, you don't have the, the land ownership. Only the government has the ownership. So you can use it maybe in 70 years or in 50 years. Okay, so by, by, by uh, selling land, a lot of cities have very big uh, progress for, uh, uh, improvement. But after you sell this kind of land, you don't have land. <laughs> okay. So we have to change this. The next one is uh, reach the peak of per capita energy consumption and uh, carbon dioxide uh, emission. Try to match the standards of these kind of global cities. So as researcher, only when we see urban development and zero natural consumption required by sustainable development, can we have a real sense of achievement? And uh, I have prepared a Shanghai's video. And uh, I hope you can enjoy it. And maybe one day you can come. For sure. Next month. Next month. <laughs> all the time. You are, you are welcome all the time. But um, can, can you hear the song? Yes. So this is the, the tallest building in Shanghai. 
in the world's second very busy city. We have uh, 17 nitros, 17 watts. Very ancient houses. This is uh, the packing of oro, uh, packing uh, opera. So many people. You can guess how many people in Shanghai? Really welcome to China. When you when you arrive. 